All eyes on Kyler Murray and Hollywood Brown. Week 15, San Francisco. Let's discuss. You are locked on Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Locked on Cardinals. Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen. Free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Today's episode, Locked On Cardinals, is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. 49ers are good. The Cardinals are rebuilding. The Cardinals have had the 49ers number in a weird way over the last couple of years in games that they shouldn't win. One of which was without Kyler Murray. With Colt McCoy under center. Shotgun. Cliff Kings were down. Clap. No hike. With Cliff. Clap. Um, I don't know if we've seen a San Francisco 49ers team this talented. This talented. And before the season started, every day as you'll know this, if this is your first listen to Locked on Cardinals, thank you, you will know it soon. It wasn't about wins and losses for the Cardinals in 2023. This has actually been a very productive year. Kyler Murray's 2-2 and since he's come back. Joshua Dobbs kept his team relevant in the sense of competitiveness through the first seven or eight weeks, uh, save the San Francisco 49ers game. They were down two touchdowns at halftime, and it wasn't close. But overall, this season has been a success, in my opinion. For those that are trying to rush this process, I'm sorry. I got nothing for you. They ain't going to win the Super Bowl this year. Ladies and gentlemen, they were never going to contend for anything except for the over-under of games that they could win at four and a half. This season so far, in my opinion, has been much more a success than a failure. Proof of concept. That's what it's been. And we've seen ugly football. We've seen just lesser than talent-wise football. But what we haven't seen is dejected football. Cleveland, that was a tough game with Clayton too. That was a tough game. We haven't seen dejected football. We haven't seen give up football. We haven't seen not ready or not prepared for kickoff football like we did more times than we should have with the last regime. It's different. And it's not Good because it's different. It's good because it's good. And it happens to be different. It's a very important distinction. This isn't like, oh, it's so much better than it was, which makes this look better than it is. This is good in a vacuum. Even if whoever the head coach was last retired and the Cardinals had, you know, done the same thing, and then you pivoted to this, it's good in a vacuum by itself, not compared to what it was the last four years. It's good. Winning will come. Talent will come. The structure is being built. One of, well, the biggest cog in this machine is Kyler Murray. He's played okay. He played well his, his first game back. Against Atlanta, they got a dub. Didn't play great against Houston. And then, you know, he played better against Pittsburgh with with his second win in four games after the sandwiching losses. But the question is still, is Kyler Murray their guy? It's what it is until we know, until we make it through the draft. And he's still the quarterback. Then we'll know. All we can do up until that point is watch and kind of see 
what he is. And listen, I've been since – I think he's the guy. You'd much rather have a QB1 than a high draft pick. What I mean by that is you'd much rather have Kyler Murray work out than have to hope that Drake May does. And we've seen Kyler Murray at a Pro Bowl fringe all-pro level in pockets at times. And he doesn't need to be the 350-yard and three-touchdown passing guy. He doesn't need to be that. He needs to play competent football, not turn the ball over, and do what he does when plays break down. Boring is good. Boring is sexy. Boring is good at the quarterback position. You don't want the ups and downs. And with Drew Petzing's offense, Jonathan Gannon at quarterback, Jonathan Gannon at quarterback, Jonathan Gannon at head coach, there's stability there that there wasn't before. So going into week 15, the reason why I titled this podcast, Kyler Murray and Hollywood Brown are under a microscope, it's more so the two of them together. Because sure, Kyler Murray, everything from now until week eight through week 18, they got the 49ers, they've got Philly, they've got Chicago, and they've got Seattle. They don't have to win the games for Kyler Murray to prove that he's the guy. And this is the only time that I will say that. If they win games, cool. It'll be detrimental to their draft capital for next year. But it doesn't, at this point, who cares? Like, if they win one more game, they could or they could win. They could pick eighth. So, yes, this is the time of year where it's like, it'd be bad if they win. And if they beat the 49ers on Sunday, it'll be because of Kyler Murray, unless Brock Purdy throws three pick sixes or something, or Christian McCaffrey plays out of it, forgets how to play football. It'll be because of Kyler Murray. And that means even more proof of concept you can get from Kyler Murray is good. The only thing that Kyler Murray can't do, and it may already be a foregone conclusion, nobody knows. Jonathan Gannon loves Kyler. Monty Osworth loves Kyler. Drew Petsing went on Adam Schefter's podcast. Loves Kyler. He's the guy. Cool. It would be a hell of a, a faux front. F-A-U-X. Fake front. If that wasn't the case at this point with how much they've lauded him. Whether it be when he was injured and he was, you know, much more ingrained with the team than, than he has been. Um, I know this is a different case. Why are we talking about a quarterback who's, you know, been with this team for so long and now he's finally starting to show the the demonstrative nature of a leader, meaning showing up, doing the stuff. Like, it just may take some guys longer. I don't know. The only thing that can happen is 12 for 28 for 125 and three interceptions at any point during the rest of the year. That's the only thing that'll really be like, oh, it may not be what we thought it was or what I thought it was, even though that's still for, I don't see Kyler Murray doing that. Um, I was going to take the, this segment to do both he and Hollywood Brown, as you could tell. Um, I'm going to package the Hollywood Brown part because it's important into the next segment, as well as are they a package deal? I thought they were. It's not shaping up to look like that, in my opinion, through what we've seen in 2023. I've got some staggering stats that would back up my idea that they can't pay Hollywood Brown at this point unless something drastically changes in the next four weeks, regardless of if he's hobbled with injury or not. Alex Clancy, Locked on Cardinals. I will discuss that next. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by LinkedIn. Um, okay, so when you're hiring for small business and you want to have as many top-tier candidates as possible to interview, you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs, okay? They have the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free, okay? LinkedIn isn't just another job board. It's got a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. 
So easy, in fact, that 80% of small businesses, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, okay? Quick, easy. They even launched a new feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. This is a fascinating, fascinating podcast today. And this isn't, you know, ooh, good job. Nailed it. That's not what I'm talking about. Alex Lancy, Locked On Cardinals. Uh, please go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. You mean a lot to me. Um, I've never actually asked for what I'm going to ask. If you like the podcast, if you listen every day or, you know, a couple times a week, a couple times a month, and you enjoy listening to what comes out of my big dumb face, if you wouldn't mind, go and leave a review. Um, Apple, Google Play, whatever it is. <laughs> I pissed off some Ravens fans. And Ravens fans do not like being pissed off. Um, actually, just on top of that, so you want a little, oh, uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to go leave a review. Somebody quote tweeted something I said. I think it was about the Ravens. It was about Lamar Jackson or something. And put my address on there, on Twitter. How insane is that? Ooh. That's creepy. Anyways, yeah, if you want, please. I'd love it. A couple, couple nice reviews would, would go a long way. If not, again, I say this every time. I'm just happy you're here. Truly. Thank you. Hollywood Brown may not be here for much longer. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tackle the, the package deal part in a sec, but just tying a bow on Kyler Murray. He's the guy, in my opinion. With some more talent around him, with a couple offensive line pieces, maybe with Marvin Harrison Jr., it'll get better. Michael Wilson being out for a large chunk of the season hasn't. That sucked because I really enjoyed watching him play. Trey McBride is his wide receiver one. I think he's the guy. And I've always thought he's the guy. He never wavered. Like I've done pockets like, well, this is what would need to happen for him not to be that guy. And he hasn't done anything. They they won a game against a tough, a tough defensive opponent, even though, you know, hobble with TJ Watt, et cetera, last week. The game took 48 hours or, you know, two weeks ago. The game took nine hours with all the rain delays, but – or the weather delays, but he looked fine. He ran the offense. Getting wins are so much more important in the grand scheme of things than putting up 400 yards and three touchdowns. He has that in his bag. He's done it. But a quarterback should never have to do that to win games if you've got a balanced roster. You know? Shouldn't have to be the case. Okay, I can talk about Kyler for another two hours. So, he's under a microscope on Sunday because he can't take a step back. That's it. It doesn't need to be something concrete like, oh, he needs 200 yards and 25 receptions and 70% completion and two touchdowns and 40 yards rushing on six. He can't put up a stinker. He can't backslide. That's it. Even if he does, he's probably still the guy. Okay? Um, It just depends on what it looks like. Now, with Hollywood Brown, this is a little bit more dire, in my opinion. It's a Christian Kirk situation. And I blame most of Christian Kirk's lack of production with the Cardinals on the scheme. Even though he had, he had, he's been, you know, hurt this year. He had a couple flash games, but he's kind of come back to earth from a huge year last year. Let me, let me just throw a couple stats at you. And I know that it was Joshua Dobbs. I know it was Clayton Toon for one game. It's been Kyler Murray for four. Okay. These are the rankings for Hollywood Brown. 47th in receiving yards. 47th in receptions while being 21st in targets and a hundred and second in yards after the catch. Tell me, when he catches, he goes down. And yes, Joshua Dobbs, sure. Trey McBride's done pretty well. Michael Wilson did pretty well. That's not necessarily fair. Um, since he's come back, Trey McBride has been the, the bell of the ball since Kyler Murray's come back. Holly Brown... He had, I think, six for 85 a couple weeks ago in garbage time. There was a huge chunk in garbage time. 
what Hollywood Brown was during the first six weeks of last year was probably over promising what he's going to be like for the entirety of his tenure with the Cardinals. He put up QB, like wide receiver one, bonkers, all pro numbers during the first six weeks of last season before Kyler, before, um, before he got hurt. Bonkers numbers. I don't think that they're at a point. You like that dramatic pause? I don't think that the Cardinals are at a point where there's any tie to him for the future. Well, obviously, he's contracting. You can franchise tag him. No, obviously, there's no ties. That's not what I mean. There is no emotional tie to Hollywood Brown. If he was, I still cringe at how this all transpired because we didn't get to see DeAndre Hopkins and Hollywood Brown on the same on the same field during meaningful snaps. It's my biggest nightmare going into last season. They high fived DeAndre Hopkins coming back from suspension as Hollywood Brown got hurt in a pointless play at the end of a game that was already decided in week six. We never got to see it. Hollywood Brown would be a dynamite wide receiver too. There's no pressure. But he's not a wide receiver one. And he's going to want a whole lot of cheese because he hasn't gotten paid yet. The one difference between he and uh, Debo Samuel and DK Metcalf is he was first round pick. AJ Brown, that Hollywood Brown was a first round pick. So he got that first round pick money, even though it was in the 20s. So that first round pick money. Now he shares an agent with the aforementioned three wide receivers. So they're going to be playing hardball for his first contract. And I think that at this point, I would rather, if I were Monty Osborne, Jonathan Gannon, just say, best of luck. Thank you. Ain't no way we're paying you that. Now with the balloon uh, salary cap of 240 mil, we'll see. There's going to be a lot of moving pieces this offseason. There's a lot of young talent on this team. There's going to be a lot, a lot of money to spend. I just don't see it. Now, we'll see. Under a microscope, he's got four games to prove everybody wrong. There are zero excuses. Yeah, he has a heel, sure. And I'm not being sarcastic. Like, it's a it's a tough injury for stopping, starting, cutting. Yes. And he had plenty of time to show more than he has up until this point. Devontae Adams still producing with Aiden O'Connell. Uh, Jamar Chase still producing with Jake Browning. Quarterback getting hurt isn't an original story. It's what you do to make the most of it. That's I said that since the beginning of the beginning of the season. It's going to be different. He doesn't have to put up 1,500 yards and 15 touchdowns for the season to be a success. He's got to show relevancy. He's got to show separation. He's got to show that he's still a bona fide wide receiver in this league. And while he will, I mean, he's young. Somebody will pay him if the Cardinals don't. But I just don't. I just don't see it right now. He's got four games. Prove wrongly. They've got Philly, which is a bad pass defense, um, to see if they can make it rain over there, you know, against them next week. But the 49ers is going to be it. He's got to put up five for 70. Like, it doesn't have to be 100 yards. It doesn't have to be two touchdowns. It's got to be a couple flash plays where it's like, oh, okay. He's still got that in the tank. We don't know what he has. We don't know how much separation he can make. So with that, are they still a package deal? It would make all the poetic and romantic sense, storybook sense, for them to be a package deal. Hollywood, Kyler Murray comes back. He and Hollywood Brown get back on track. And that's all she wrote. You give him $15, $18 million a year. Kyler Murray's got his guy. He's got his, he's got his friend. He's got his one of his best friends. And you ride off into the sunset and you just, whatever. If you draft Marvin Harrison Jr. and bring it, like, whatever. Hollywood Brown is part of the team for the future. And while, regardless of everything that I just said, if it's close, Ty goes to Kyler Murray wanting Hollywood Brown. Like, Ty goes to the quarterback with this. And maybe a franchise tag, even though I think it's a terrible idea. But if you want to get a fire under his rear, you franchise tag him, you bite the bullet, 
I mean, the salary cap isn't going to be great for the Cardinals next year anyways because the cap hit Kyler Murray's going to – that he's going to hit with, with his contract extension next season. It's going to be massive. So maybe you just figure it out and you're like, listen, okay, you get one more go. And then you bring back the question, why are they a package deal? Because if Kyler Murray doesn't perform in 2024, you can move off from them. Like this isn't like an all or nothing. Spoiler alert, there's going to be a lot of good quarterbacks every year that come out. Not a lot of good quarterbacks. There's going to be quarterbacks every year. I don't think they're a package deal anymore. Kyler Murray's the guy. Hollywood Brown doesn't look to be. At the end of the day, this is a business. Ty goes to the quarterback, having his wide receiver one from college, showing flashes last year, massive flashes during the first six weeks of the season where Hollywood Brown got hurt. And obviously Kyler, you know, tore his ACL. You know, we got to see more. We've got to see more from Hollywood Brown than the last four weeks or he's out. It's not Steve Kime anymore. If you are not a part of the future, you will not be with this team immediately. And immediately for Hollywood Brown could be right after the end of the week 18 game against Seattle if he doesn't shape up for the last four weeks of the season. Alex Nancy locked on Cardinals' path to victory. Let's talk about this game. I've wasted 20 minutes, or not wasted. I've taken 20 minutes to talk big picture. Let's talk what's in front of us in week 15. Alex Nancy locked on Cardinals. I will discuss that next. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by BetterHelp. So I'm getting back in to therapy, okay? I, at times, am, uh, you know, a little hard on myself. Um get anxious, things like that. And, you know, around the holidays, why not give you a little break? You know, why not give yourself a little break? Like whether it's by starting therapy, going easier on yourself during the tough moments or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. Okay. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suitable to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a therapist, and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash locked on. Alex Lancey, Locked on Cardinals. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen. Free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Please go to the YouTube channel. Search Locked on Arizona Cardinals. Hit the subscribe button. Turn notifications on. I really appreciate it. It's um, We're almost through the 2023 season. This is absolute insanity to me. Um, and it has been so much more... Enjoy like enjoyable is not the right word because football is always enjoyable, but rewarding, maybe, maybe rewarding because it's there's more to take away, there's been more substance than expected. That's fascinating, it's just great. Cardinals are over 10 point dogs. Um, Let's talk about what the Cardinals need to do in an effort to win. One, they need to get into the kitchen, pull up a chair, and sit their keisters down in the kitchen of Brock Purdy. Because if Brock Purdy can sit back there and have the uh, proverbial tea parties in the backfield, like I discuss, it's going to be a long day. They're going to put up a 40 burger. If they can get after Brock Purdy, that's – Cutting the head off the snake, as it were, um, will be their best chance for success. Now, the toughest part about this is that's not even close to their best player. Um, Christian McCaffrey, for those – my – I can't remember what year it was. It was He was still with the, the Panthers. 2019? I think it was 2019. Um, what I remember about Christian McCaffrey was State Farm Stadium – I think it was the first play of the third quarter. That game, I can't remember. Uh, 80 yards to the house. 
up the gut. Ain't nobody around him. 80 yards to the 80 yards to the house. 75 yards to the house, whatever it was. I don't know if it was at the 20 or 25 back then to the house. Um if it tells you anything, I believe that he's the top ranked fantasy football projection or player projecting in uh, in week 15. Luckily for me, I've got him on my squad and I need a dub since the playoff. But I I went back and forth a couple times with this. It's like, do you stop Debo or do you stop Christian McCaffrey? Do you stop the run, stack eight, and let Debo run wild? Let Brandon Ayuk run wild? Let George Kittle just wreak havoc in between the tackle box all the way down, all the way up the seam? Like, it's... It's a folly to discuss trying to stop this team. I mean, even if the Cardinals had, you know, Carlos Dansby defense, Darnold Dock, like, if they had that squad, this team would be difficult. The 49ers offense is one of the best offenses ever constructed in the history of football. And it's brought to you by Mr. Irrelevant, where they have to pay him $11 a year and they can go spend money everywhere else, which genius. I mean, John Lynch, kudos. So, Pat, the victory. I mean, they got to get up to the quarterback, like all, you know, being glib aside. They've got to get after Brock Purdy. If he just sits there in the pocket, that's all she wrote. Um, I still would say, holding Christian McCaffrey at bay in some capacity. And what I mean at bay is like 100 yards and a touchdown. Like you can't let him get 150 to 200 all-purpose yards and two-plus touchdowns. It'll be a long day if that's the case. With Debo, it's like, okay, well, the other side is, well, you just keep everything in front of you. I remember the Chiefs and the Bills played. Uh, this was a couple of years ago. And what the Bills did was, nope, ain't getting over the top of us. So all Patrick Mahomes would dink and dunk the entire game. And I think that I'd rather see that from this 49ers offense than a Debo Samuel five yard in to the house from like their own 30 yard line because he's so damn fast. This is going to be, in my opinion, a very difficult game to watch for the Cardinals defense. Oh, that's profound. This is going to be a tough one. It's gonna be really tough. You're gonna show up to play. There's no, there's no question that like there's this isn't this isn't the last couple of years. They're gonna show up. Buda Baker's gonna have steam coming out of his ears. He's gonna be ready to roll. Um, and they're just gonna go up against a team with an offense that we've haven't seen in a long time. So what that will do though, and I almost didn't bring this up, like it's going to make me look like I'm grasping at straws in week 15. My hair's falling out. It's like, oh my God, can the season end already? Why are we talking about these, these outside the outside the box topics? But just think about it this way. So say the 49ers just start scoring. Okay. They're up, you know, 14-3, 14-7, or 14-10, whatever it is. And they just start rolling. This is going to allow Kyler Murray to really get comfortable with this offense in a different way. Where it's like, okay, these are the rules. This is the stencil. Go. And I'm not talking about garbage time. I'm talking about, okay, remember when um, Minnesota in 2021 came, went up, I think they went up 21 nothing or 21-3 in the first half. The Cardinals came all the way back. That's kind of what, I, what I'm thinking with Kyler Murray on Sunday. If the 49ers smack him in the mouth, then there's it's just going to be relaxed football. And a lot of times that's when Kyler Murray plays his best. And I'm not going to say that they're going to go down 21 nothing and come all the way back and win by any stretch. But – what I'm saying is this could be the best time for the Cardinals to play the 49ers in the sense that we need to see what Kyler Murray is more. And this kind of game, as long as it's not the playoff game against the Rams, this could be a coming out party in a different sense for Kyler Murray, reminding people I'm still the guy. Just wait till we get some more talent on the defensive side of the ball, offensive line, wide receivers, et cetera.
and then it'll be game on. I think it's going to be lopsided, but I think we're going to see a lot of positives from the Cardinals on Sunday against one of the better defenses and the best offense in the NFL. Buckle up. It's going to be fun, regardless of outcome. Alex Lancey, Locked on Cardinals. I will talk to you on Monday.